people going to try to see their families at Christmas when they spent already a really high ticket price and then they didn't get to go, that is going to leave people PO'd. Yeah. nerds. You have Connor Ann here. I'm here with producer Kenny and we're going to talk about something that you've probably heard about. It was all over the news, all over the world, really crazy Southwest debacle. So we all know about the Southwest disaster that shocked us over the Christmas holiday, but today we're going to recap the situation and put it into layman's terms of what really went awry. Um, Okay, basically, Southwest stole Christmas. So a quick Google search of the meltdown summary said, Southwest Airlines is anticipating money losing fourth quarter after a winter storm, winter storm, and technology meltdown led to nearly 17,000 canceled flights and stranded hundreds of thousands of holiday travelers. The cancellations will result in a pre-tax hit of 725 million to 825 million from lost revenue, extra costs. and reimbursing their travelers. Holy crap. That's an expensive few weeks for them. That's a pricey 825 mil. I mean, (laughs) yeah, the disaster is now being called the most expensive operational meltdown in airline industry history. I mean, have you ever heard of anything like this? You've been in the airline industry for a minute. No, I feel like these things pop up, but the scale is not as big. And then in other times, the moment is not as big. So people going to try to see their families at Christmas when they spent already a really high ticket price and then they didn't get to go, that is going to leave people PO'd. Yeah. I think, what do you think the lasting impact will be? Like, what are they going to do about the consumers? Do you think they have short memories and the impact probably won't last beyond a couple quarters? Or do you think this is something that will kind of leave a sour taste in people's mouths? Unfortunately, I think that probably it'll be a big nothing burger for, <laughs> from the consumers because yeah. airlines are a commodity and people will take whatever is the best flight. Most people, especially Southwest travelers, uh, who typically slant a little bit more towards leisure. And so they're just looking for the best price for the seat on the plane. And I'm not sure that past performance really hinders Southwest as much. I think that it may invite legislation from the, the Department of Transportation, but that's yet to be seen. So, The perks of being an airline. There aren't that many of us. And if we just get the plane in the air, people will fly. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Any other, any other business would have been screwed, but yeah, they, okay, let's, let's actually, let's break this down for the people. So like, why did this happen? Kenny, where did everything go sideways? So it's a blend of a few different things. First of all, there was bad weather, which always puts stress on airlines because when you cancel flights, that causes a bunch of mayhem outside of what maybe just the typical person thinks, which is the passengers didn't get to their destination. But that also means that the crew didn't get to their destination. And it also means that the plane didn't get to their de- their destination. And if you're running an airline, you do not want your planes on the ground because when your planes are on the ground, they're not making you money. So those planes, usually when they land in Orlando at 10 a.m., they're flying somewhere else in about another hour. So The bad weather was the first part, and then they have a really antiquated scheduling system, which we've covered in previous podcast episodes. But think about it, uh, if you want a quick analogy, it's kind of like the days of the yellow pages, right? So (laughs) if you're a crew and you miss your flight, the airline really doesn't know where you are. So you have to phone in your location and you have to try to get accommodations. And that whole process uh, basically caused a meltdown. They have a really antiquated scheduling system that the Southwest unions that represent pilots and workers, they've been complaining about for years. So this problem is not something new. It's something that's documented and known about. But nonetheless, it's weather plus a bad scheduling system. 
And then they also run on a point to point model. So they're not hub and spoke, meaning they're not like Delta where there's Atlanta and JFK and LAX where you're basically flying to the hub and then you're going. When these things happen, it's a little bit easier for hub and spoke airlines to recover because they have a ton of planes at their hub so they can start sending stuff out. And so this was a really unfortunate thing for Southwest. It was kind of the perfect storm. And <laughs> a wink. A wink, yeah. If you're listening, <laughs> uh, you'll just hear a weird pause. And uh, But there was a wink in there. So it was the perfect storm. Southwest really got put under a lot of pressure. And they they will lose brand loyalty from this because internally we have some customers that called us and canceled their Southwest flights for next year. Uh, it didn't happen to a bunch of people, but we definitely had a handful of groups that said that they'll never fly Southwest again. Now, they say that until they have to pay bag fees and a higher price on another airline. We'll see if they come back, but it was definitely an interesting development. Okay, going back to what you said about the hub and spoke. So from my perspective of being new to this industry, I thought that every airline had a hub. That's kind of crazy to think about. Like what, what really happened to Southwest is they couldn't consolidate things because they didn't know where their crews were and they didn't know where their planes were. That's actually crazy. Yeah. So not knowing where the crews, where the crews are, the planes are stuck. Crews also time out. So there's a lot of rules and laws that govern how, how much your pilots can work, right? We don't want a pilot who's been pulling an all nighter, you know, flying, 24 hours straight. We don't want him flying, him or her flying the plane. So there's a lot of rules with that stuff. So they had a lot of their crew time out and they needed a day to basically refresh everything. So say that this happened on Wednesday, not only was Wednesday's flights canceled, but then they needed a day to catch up. So they needed to cancel Thursday. So yeah. it's, uh, it's a not an ideal situation. And again, being point to point as they are, it just puts too much stress on them. I imagine point to point, like using that network can be really hard to contain problems. I mean, this is proof, but it just in general, that sounds just not super efficient. Is that really, is it common? Like are other, are a lot of other airlines point to point? So a lot of the low cost carriers are point to point. So your spirits, your frontiers, your elite, your allegiance, they fly market to market, but all of the big network airlines, like your Deltas, your American airlines, United, they all fly a hub and spoke network. So, you know, Dallas, think Dallas for American, think Atlanta for Delta for United, think Houston, and a whole bu- uh, Chicago and a bunch of others. So uh, those those airlines have a little bit of an upper hand. But in terms of passenger volume, Southwest does more than all of them domestically. So Whoa. it's a really big operation. And when things go wrong, it goes really wrong. Oh my gosh. I was reading about, speaking of them being just so domestically popular, I was reading how they operate by far the most interstate routes. So like People in California actually use Southwest as like public transportation, (laughs) basically. I believe that Southwest started as just being an airline in Texas. Yes, I read that as well. It was saying that Southwest came out of nowhere. They made their airline like fun, affordable. They wanted to be a little disruptive in the industry, take the pressure off of like you know, airlines being so serious all the time. This is where pilots started cracking jokes over the (laughs) intercom. The flight attendants were really fun. There's a bunch of like old videos from like the nineties of them, like rapping to everyone in the cabin. Yeah, Yeah, We have to bring, we have to bring that back. The last flight that I was on, I just heard credit card offers for Uh, like two minutes. And I'm like, listen, if you're going to do a credit card offer and just be blaring, I'm trying to listen to my show and I just hear, (laughs) okay, if you sign this up, you'll get 25,000 miles. I was like, 25,000 miles. That's That's not even a good deal. That's not even a good deal enough for how annoying that, that that this is. (laughs) Now, if you gave me a rap, give me a little jingle, a little rap, hire me a singer to come and sing to me on board. Just anything, but this like, you'll get 2% off cash back. It's like, yeah, I could get 2% off cash back anywhere. Stop. (laughs) Lame ad next. 
<laughs> next, right? Let me go back to sitting in silence on my little 31 inch seat. It's so true. Like, think, well, I guess I was a kid, so everything seems more fun. But like back in the day when you would get airplane wings and like the, <laughs> the flight attendants were actually like stand up comedians. I do miss the days. What happened? <laughs> Yeah, you they've traded out the airplane wings for like a hand wipe and they're like, here, take this so you can clean your own seat. <laughs> we didn't have time to. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have time. I know you Here's get there and there's sun. just Light like nap. there's crumb remnants. You're like, oh God. <laughs> and like, oh, this guy that flew this plane before me was hungry and messy. <laughs> and messy. Is that pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Is that oh, a yeah. pepperoni at my foot? <laughs> it's a weird choice. So basically, Southwest has a lot to do on the operations side. Um, and they were saying before updating to Amadeus, which is their operating system they have now, they couldn't do red-eye flights, international flights. I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting based on their popularity how far behind they are technology-wise. I don't understand. And as of now, the airline's currently allocating a billion dollars for IT-related investments and upgrades and maintenance and all that kind of stuff. But um, I mean, they're taking, they're taking a real hit to the Southwest balance sheet, right? <laughs> yeah. This upcoming investor call, I would assume this is going to be the most well-attended and well-listened to quarterly earnings report probably ever in the airline industry yes. because everyone's going to be tuning in just to see how bad of a hit this was to the balance sheet and what are they going to do in response. So I'm not sure when the call is, but I'm sure people will be tuning in. So the call, the earnings report is tomorrow. Ooh, it's set tomorrow. your calendars. So Wednesday, Wednesday, January 25th, if you're no, listening no. to this late. <laughs> it's January 26th, <laughs> ah, ah. Thursday, January 26th, Southwest earnings report, but it'll give us a lot more information on the situation. And, you know, I'm curious, the wall street journal says it's like a five to $600 million hit just in the fourth quarter alone. So the airline said they'll be giving everyone with a canceled or significantly delayed flight around 300 bucks in loyalty credit, which mm. I mean, mm. That doesn't sound great. And then they offer to reimburse like reasonable expenses on alternative flights. People had to book hotels, cars or whatever. So theoretically, a consumer, a family, uh, you know, a loyal Southwest user could get their money back. But it's still up in the air. Yeah. But yeah. But I'm sure. Well, speaking of um, companies who are. Not struggling with operations. Let's actually talk about Marriott because Marriott yes. was in the news late, lately uh, through one of our favorite startups, Groups 360. So let's go ahead and break this down. Yeah, Say break it down. you are a meeting planner and your client wants to book 20 rooms for a hotel for a team offsite, right? You want to get everyone together. Perfect. Instead of booking online like a normal person in 2023, you actually have to submit an RFP and call group sales over the phone. Now, during COVID, a lot of the hotels were forced to lay off their group sales operations and they're not coming back. So now that phone, that phone call goes unanswered or that RFP just sits for a really long time. So lo and behold, there's a solution to this problem. Uh, Marriott is becoming the first major hotel brand to offer instant booking on a startup called Groups 360 out of Nashville. And this soon could be the standard way to book small meetings online. So the backstory of Groups 360 is really cool. And this is a super big moment in travel. Back in April of 2019, somehow, I don't know how this deal got, got done, but <laughs> Marriott, Hilton, Accor, and IHG put in $50 million collectively to a startup out of Nashville called Jeez. Group 360. Since then, they've raised tens of millions of dollars more, and their goal is to get rid of that pesky little offline RFP process and just allow group hotel space to be booked online. Now, this problem is near and dear to my heart because I've spent a crazy amount of hours trying to <laughs> solve this same exact hours. thing. Countless hours. For the people Tr listening that don't know what RFP means, hit us. So RFP means for response for proposal. Mm. I think, but now that you say that... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm gonna give Let one. me fact check myself. <laughs> what does RFP mean? You're saying um, it was like, such w- conviction. You're like, mm, don't know. Oh, see? <laughs> okay. So RFP stands for... <laughs> Were you totally <laughs> <I> wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Idiot. So RFP stands for request for proposal. So this will happen when someone wants to say, hey, company, will you do X, Y, and Z for me? I have this business opportunity for you. That will be an RFP that the uh, vendor will respond to. Okay, cool. Continue. (laughs) Awesome. So this new integration is going to give planners access to inventory at over 1,500 Marriott properties across the U.S. and Canada. And there's going to be more that are coming online in 2023. And the really cool thing is their CEO anticipates that over 20,000 leading hotel properties will be equipped to offer online booking in the months ahead. So this is part of a larger thesis that group travel for decades has been stuck in the old days of fax machines and phone calls and emails. And this decade, I predict for the hotel space and the airline space, this will be the last decade of you booking group space on a hotel room block or an airline room block. This will be the last decade that you book that over the phone. And it's a really exciting time. And kudos to those guys at Group 360. That's a really big deal. No, I mean, there's a lot that goes into booking a meeting like that. Yeah. And in the thread of airline technology, we saw just how old some airline technology is. Hotels suffer from the same issues. The travel industry was really the pioneers and the first one of the first industries to go digital, going all the way back to the late 60s and early 70s. Yeah. And they have a lot of old, old protocols, a lot of old APIs, and just a lot of old infrastructure that has made it really hard for them to innovate. So kudos to the hotels for realizing that it's silly to have to book 20 rooms over the phone. Totally. And it's silly to have to book 30 flights by calling Delta's group desk. All of that stuff should happen online. Just hold. And then the the hold music is like cutting out and you just hear crackling and it's just uh, the same Beethoven song. (laughs) Totally. Our agents probably have nightmares of some of the airline hold music because they've spent, I don't know. (laughs) thousands of hours on hold over the last five years. And I think those days are coming to an end. It's going to take a really long time. I think one of the most interesting things about the groups 360 thing is they received the investment from Marriott in April of 2019. Today in January of 2022 is when they went live. So this has been a process and a product that has been three years in the making. So wrap your head around that, that Marriott is on the cap table of this company. Yeah. They have Marriott likely has all the resources in the world. Groups 360 is extremely well-funded, super talented team, really smart. And it took them three years to do this. So change in travel takes a really long time. So we should not be holding our breath for anything with Southwest. Yeah. And just celebrate the small wins like this Groups 360 Marriott thing. And it's like the concept of, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, you needed a meltdown to tell you <laughs> this is outdated. Spend, spend the money, spend a little extra cheddar. Make your customers happy because if you can't get a plane in the air, we have a problem. (laughs) Multiple problems. (laughs) We have a couple problems. No one likes to be at the airport without knowing (laughs) you're going to (laughs) leave. Totally. (laughs) Uh, That's awesome, though. And that tells you guys, you know, it's outdated because it's really, really expensive to change these operating systems for a hotel or an airline, right? And I don't even know how much cash on hand Marriott has, but they are really smart for getting ahead of it. Let's wrap up. All right, guys. So that was a little deep dive on Southwest, a little information on Marriott and Groups 360. I hope you liked hearing us today, and I guess I'll see you next week. Later, nerds.